Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a February garden tour. And I love these videos because I get to show off what I'm doing in the garden. And I hope that you guys comment back and let me know what you're doing in your gardens and maybe I'll copy some things that you're doing. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about what's on my lanai. My lanai is just a covered patio in the backyard. That's what we call it in Florida. Um, I'm here in central Florida. It's February, beautiful day outside. And this right here is where I'm growing my mint. Um, mint is an invasive plant, and so you're not really supposed to put it in a raised bed or in a row garden or anything because it'll just take over. So I chose to put it in a partial sunspot on my lanai, and it seems really happy. Um, check it out. I also have some seed starting going on right here. A couple weeks ago, I went to a seed starting class at my local nursery. And uh, they, they said a couple interesting things about my particular area and how we should start seeds. Number one was they said it's always, it's pretty much always humid and hot enough to skip the heat mat and skip, and skip the humidity dome. So they recommended that we just do it in a partial shade spot in, on your uh, back porch or something like that. So that's exactly what I'm doing. These here have been going for um, uh, about a week now maybe two weeks. And they're starting to look really good. These are kind of my slow germinating plants. I wanted to start them from seed because they're chives, thyme, and oregano. And um, if you've ever tried to start them from seed, it's like sometimes it's a little frustrating because they take forever to germinate. Um, so I thought maybe I could control it a little better in this setting and it's working out. I wanted to grow these herbs because Oregano is so beautiful as like um, a border on a raised bed or a border on any kind of island um, or like a mulch island or something like that. So I have a spot in my front yard. I'm trying to fix up the island, the mulch bed out there, and I want to do a full border that's like a three-tiered border. The first tier would be oregano, and then I want thyme right behind it, and then I want chives. All three of those are perennials in Florida, so I'm hoping... I can have like this ever-growing herb garden in the front yard of perennial herbs and it should look better than the weeds that always grow out there all summer. Um, so we'll see. That's my plan for this. I do need a lot more than this. I wanted to test the theory with five of each um, and then plant them and see how it goes and then add from there. So let's move on to the long raised bed. Let's check out this long raised bed. We're gonna start here at this corner and work our way down. Up here you'll see this beautiful Brussels sprout crop. This is my first time growing Brussels sprouts and it's going well, it's just super slow. Um, look at those sprouts in there. They're almost big. Ideally you're gonna harvest them when each you're gonna harvest them when each one of these sprouts is like big enough to be touching the other ones and you can barely even see any stem. So I've got some a little ways to go. We'll see. Stay tuned. Um, lots of onions are planted around this. This was like my brassica and onions area in the garden. So I've got yellow onions right here. I do think I messed up and didn't plant short day onions like I should have. Uh, so eventually I'll probably pull those up, be disappointed, and try again um, next fall. These are a couple of spinach plants. I was just testing growing spinach. Um, I'm scaling that up. I'll show you some more spinach in a little bit. These are green uh, bush beans. There's four in this square. Like one is here, two, and this one's sprouted a little late, and this one, four. Back there is red onions, arugula that I just harvested, if you saw that video. Um, and this is more yellow onions, bok choy. I can't wait to harvest some bok choy soon. Um, then I've got chives growing. These are pole beans. I've got four, and I know that these are going to need some support um, once but I just haven't put the support in there. I haven't figured out what I want to do for that yet. Back there's green onions, which are so easy to grow and so great to grow because they're a cut and come again type crop. You can trim them down and then come back and trim them again and get green onions continuously. Here's arugula. 
I like to have arugula, so um, we're growing that. This one here is about to bloom. This one here is about to bloom and give me seeds, I guess. This is another square foot of spinach, really young seedlings right there. Back there is basil. I am gonna probably see about either pruning off the ones that have some black on them or maybe just pulling this entire plant and trying again. Just because like I keep getting these black spots. I think it might be a disease. These are my San Marzano tomato plants. I think I need to prune them so that the sun can hit. Like we're at the, I'm at the point where it's producing tomatoes and I think the leaves are inhibiting the sun from hitting the tomatoes and ripening them. So I'm probably gonna go back in sometime today and prune off a bunch of those sun leaves. Um, there's some that are ready to pull. I like to pull them once they start changing color. That way they ripen on my um, on my dining table in the window. Um, that way, you know, they don't get destroyed by an animal or a pest or something like that. Down here, some carrots, just radishes grow in here. More radishes and more radishes. I'm trying to perfect my radish growing technique. There's green onions right here. Chives, ooh, right here is, um, this is a square foot that I just planted, so we don't even have any seedlings. Maybe there's a tiny little sprout right there. So this is lacinato kale right here, and over here I've got um, jalapeno and cilantro. They just haven't come up yet. I planted them like two days ago. Here's um, four beautiful bok choy. I just love that plant, it's so pretty. I'm gonna let those get a little bigger before I harvest them. This is my eggplant. Um, I can see some growth coming out. So I think we're gonna start seeing some blooms and maybe get an eggplant sometime, in, sometime soon. I mean, the eggplant will take a while to mature, but at least I'll be able to see one growing. Basil here. Planted more spinach here, but they're just very little right now. Some kohlrabi. I think I did one kohlrabi here and one kohlrabi here, and the rest were carrots that were not ready to harvest, so I just let them be. Back here is shishito pepper. I got one shishito pepper off the plant already, and I, I did choose to harvest it early just because I've heard that if you harvest early, it like signals to the plant to make more. Um, so I may actually just harvest that too. Even though it's young, I want it to feel the pressure to produce. Like I'm ready to eat some shishito peppers. Over here is oregano. This is what I'm talking about with how beautiful oregano can be as like a border. See how pretty that is? It's so full and luscious. And I've actually started using it constantly in my breakfasts. Like I put it like mixed into my egg omelet. So good. Here's borage. Cilantro that's blooming back there. I'm hoping it'll just drop the seeds right in place and plant some more cilantro. Here is, it's actually four square feet that are kind of um, joined together as one square. So I have the butternut squash growing right in the center of that spot and it's trellised up so I had so much more room around the edge so I planted this, these are daikon carrots back I mean daikon radish back there there's four of them there's there's a type of kale there another kale here these are it's like a whole row of carrots and I did some like there's three spots that are cleared off from the mulch and that's where I put like uh jalapeno, shishito, and cilantro, just because I want more of those plants. And I figured I have room, and I really think that I'm not that far away from harvesting that butternut squash and getting rid of that plant. So I figured it was a good enough time to plant jalapeno and shishito without actually inhibiting the growth of that butternut squash. Over here we've got 
nasturtiums. I wanted to make sure I had flowers near the flowering plants. So I've got, you know, nasturtiums and borage right next to butternut squash and eggplant and shishito peppers. Um, this is going to be a cabbage. Um, and back here, uh, so I tried again with companion planting. Companion planting, in the, in the past what I've done is, um, you know, I'll have a crop here in one square foot and then a pollinator and then an herb. Um, but what I'm trying here is kind of condensing that so that it's like in the same square foot and it's a little bit more like, um, you know, like the pollinator might be like right next to the cucumber plant so that I get, I try to, I'm trying to encourage the bees to actually get to the cucumber, decrease the travel they have to do and see if that helps. Um, I'm kind of ignoring some spacing rules, but whatever. I can always pull a plant if it's too much. Over here, I planted on the back side. So what I've learned from doing, let's go back over here, and I, I want to share something that I learned right here. So this butternut squash plant, I put it in the center of four square feet, and then I had to wait a while until it actually was big enough to reach, to, um, to reach my trellis, to be trellised, you know? I had to wait a little while for it to actually be long enough to pick it up off the ground and connect it to the trellis. So what I've done on this square foot is plant the yellow squash. It's a vining, it's another vining type of squash. I planted it on the far side of my raised bed that's like right next to my trellis so I wouldn't have to wait so long to use the vertical growing that my trellis gives me. So yeah. So back here I've planted like yellow squash and then in between the yellow squash I put some kale and nasturtium. I think there's another, you can see the kale sprout right here. I think it's a red boar kale so it should be like a dark purplish red color. Here's some daikon radishes again. I'm really looking forward to doing um, pickled daikon again. Here's thyme. So see how it's a woody herb like that? A good way to think about whether an herb is an annual or a perennial is to look at how it grows. And thyme is woody, so it's a perennial. Here's another half square foot of spinach. I think I put two kohlrabis right here. We're still in the season for kohlrabi, although I'm not sure how they'll do compared to the ones I planted in November. Um, this is celery. Celery is proving to take forever. I did feed it with some fertilizer to help speed it up. We'll see. And that's been going since today's February 22nd and these celery plants have been going from seed since October 1st. There's cabbage back there. Dill, I've already harvested so much dill, um, but it's good. I mean, I think I need to start making like a yogurt dill sauce for um, dipping veggies in and stuff. That would be a really good use of dill. We've got zucchini back here, you can see. Um, if you take a look at the stem, you can see just how much pruning I've had to do over the life of this plant because I'm getting issues with powdery mildew. And I try to, like you can still see some right there. So I've tried to treat it with hydrogen peroxide and water, but if I'm being honest, it's hard for me to do garden maintenance in the evening because my family schedule is just crazy with my girls playing softball every night. We've got to cook dinner every night. Really, it's unlikely that I come out here in the garden and spray that solution every night. And I can't do it in the middle of the day or it'll burn the leaves. So I've basically just resorted to pruning the leaves. And here we are. Hopefully it works, but I feel like I keep getting these female flowers with baby zucchini on them and they're not getting pollinated for whatever reason. And I haven't really had one grow big enough, anywhere close to big enough to harvest. We'll see how it goes. Over here I have another borage plant. Um, again, that's because I wanted the flowers next to my plants that need pollinators like zucchini. Here I've got cabbage. Back there I planted um, cucumber. One of my cucumber spots has pickling cucumbers and one has um, slicing cucumbers in it. I've got whorehound going here. I've never grown whorehound before and marigolds. Here we've got um, two plants of kale. Um, we have, what did I write down over there? 
Uh, we have watermelon, sage, and marigolds. So in this area, I planted one watermelon, um, some sage, and some marigolds, and I'm not really sure which seedlings those are. I don't remember. <laughs> Here's parsley, and I did plant some more whorehound right here, although I don't see any signs of life yet. Let's move on to the strawberries. On these three wall troughs, I have strawberries growing. And you can see that some of them are getting ready. I wanted to flip this one over to see if the sun would help ripen that white spot. Um, they're doing well up here, actually. I do water them manually once, probably once a day or once every two days. And I have these watering stakes in here because these plants are thirsty. I did fertilize also recently. Um, I know it seems like three wall troughs isn't very many strawberries, but I did that on purpose because this is my first time ever growing strawberries. I wanted to test whether this setup would work, number one, and number two, I wanted to test like transplanting the runners. I've tested it and the theory is working well. Um, I'm going to install way more of these wall troughs all along my fence in the backyard um, and see if I can get like a really great strawberry harvest next year but our planting window is like September to October in the fall and then we have like a year worth of um, producing from those plants so over here we have three more strawberry plants uh, most of them are flowering but I don't see any fruits yet oh maybe a little bit right there over here these are the runners so those two wall troughs were, I bought those six plants from the nursery in October. These were transplanted runners that came obviously later, but they're doing well. Um, they're a little bit behind the other ones. Like I don't see any flowering yet. Um, and this one was almost dying, but I managed to save it and now it's, it's doing some new growth. So I'm happy with that. Down here before we walk away, this is my garlic. I planted this like you're supposed to. I planted it in October from some garlic uh, from some I planted it in October from some grocery store cloves. But I will say it seems like they keep disappearing. Um, I planted like 11 cloves in here and I definitely have one, two that are going really well. And this one is like okay. This one's okay. And then it just seems like a bunch of them just died. I don't even know where they are. So that's a little disappointing, but oh well. Maybe I'll learn something from it. Let's go across the yard to my other raised beds. I've got a, um, I'll walk you through my three and a half by six and a half foot raised bed that's kind of placed in a odd spot in my yard. My husband always makes fun of me for my placement on that one. And then I have uh, some herb planters that um, I'm doing some experiments in and I'll show you that. This is what I mean about odd placement. It is on the south side of this oak tree so it gets plenty of sun. That's not the issue. It's just kind of like <laughs> I didn't make it like the same angle as my fence. It doesn't it doesn't look great <laughs> uh, but it looks like the garden is really happy. So let's check it out. I did, on this raised bed, I did herbs and flowers all around the whole border. So we've got nasturtium, dill, marigolds, which I just uh, did a little short about harvesting the seeds from marigolds, which was pretty cool. These are beautiful flowers. Um, oh look, there's one that's ready if you wanna harvest some marigold seeds and, Ooh, I just pulled them right out. We'll just, Throw them in there and see what happens. There's parsley, borage. Back here we have some more daikon radishes. There should be four, but I've noticed when I do four at a time, it's like they definitely have uh, different rates of maturity, even though they're so close together. It's like one, two, three, and four. They were all planted on the same day, but look at the different maturity. One, two, three, four. I guess sunlight plays a big factor and maybe how close they are to the emitters on the drip system. 
These are my four kohlrabi plants. This one is doing the best so far. It's getting pretty big, actually. I might harvest that in the next month. Back there, there's another one getting a bulb here. This one's starting to bulb, and that one is a few weeks behind. So actually, it probably works out where I'm going to harvest like one and then wait a week or two and harvest another and so on, which is probably the right pace for me consuming kohlrabi. Um, here we've got shallots. Um, we've got chives and thyme. These herbs, like chives and thyme, I just plan to leave them in the raised bed and just change out those crops in the middle. This was zinnia a long time ago, but it really wasn't doing well, so I pulled it up and planted some basil. But I've noticed um, basil and other herbs, they just have a long period of time before they actually germinate. Sometimes it's frustrating, and I think that's one of the reasons why I might lean towards seed starting in a smaller controlled environment versus putting it straight in a raised bed for herbs. Here's, we've got some basil. There's four or three basil plants. One, two, three, right next to nasturtium. More shallots. This is, I think, cauliflower. I planted that in November, and it's still only this big. We'll see. I did fertilize recently. I'll probably keep fertilizing. Try to speed that growth up. Give it what it wants. Here's some cilantro. My family loves cilantro. I really don't have enough of it growing. So I'm going to put a bunch more in the ground because um, I know the summer heat is going to kill it off. I want to grow a bunch real quick. Make some chimichurri and some other stuff and, you know, have it year round. Bok choy right here. Four of them. This one I planted much later. So it makes sense that it would be much smaller. Here's my rosemary. Again, another perennial herb. You can tell from the woody stem. I love rosemary so much. This is oregano again. Dill. Right here, I planted some beets. You gotta look pretty close to find the beet though. Do you see this little sprout? That's a beet. That's another beet. Or maybe I need to change the lighting. So this is one beet. Another beet. Um, a third beet. And a fourth beet. These are early wonder beets. This is collard greens. It's getting bigger. Doing pretty good. Nasturtium, chives, parsley. Here's another square of beets. So one, two, three, four. Really tiny right now. Some parsley, more oregano, nasturtium. Another planter outside of the raised bed with rosemary and nasturtium. And then let's go over there to look at that planter. This is where I planted a lot more cilantro and um, I put a, I put um, California Wonder bell peppers right in the middle. I haven't seen any. I'm not sure if you know the leaves are covering up the sprouts or what, but I did plant some bell peppers and cilantro all around the edges here. And if we turn around, we've got my baby Dutch yellow potatoes. I think in about a month or six weeks, we will see these tops die off. And then it's going to be time to harvest those potatoes and make room for sweet potato growing. Now let me show you the four raised beds that I set up for gardening experiments. I'll talk a little bit about the experiments and how they're going. And, um, but each raised bed is supposed to be identical in what I'm growing. So raised bed. One two, three, and four. Um, here I've got, each one is um, col one plant of collards, one joy choy. It's a Chinese cabbage. I did nine spinach plants, although not all of them have germinated. I'm going to probably plant some more seeds and try again, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there. 
one cilantro. I should have two more cilantros here and there. And this is a Italian Genovese basil. And I should have a Thai basil over here, but um, I don't. I'm waiting to mulch until I get all those sprouts. But I wonder if I need to go ahead and mulch as much as possible because it's... I watered it this morning, but you can see it just dries out. There's It dries out real quick. I watered it for an hour this morning. Um, here's my second raised bed. The exact same plants. This one has insect netting, but uh, my design for my insect netting is total crap. I need to redo it, <laughs> and I need to hurry up before the insects get in there. I'll probably just drape an entire piece of insect netting around it and maybe put like a bungee cord around the whole thing and do it that way. But these plants look happy. If you check them out, you can see actually one, two, three cilantros. Um, my spinach is actually getting pretty mature over there. We, we're starting to see some of the um, more mature leaves instead of that, uh, you know, baby seat. Uh, more mature leaves instead of those baby leaves. Over here, raised bed number three. This is the one that I'm allowed to use fertilizer in, so I did go ahead and fertilize with a fertilizer that's safe for seedlings and transplants. Although these are all just seedlings. Um, this one, I think, is one of the few raised beds that actually has all the plants that I planned. So here we have Italian basil, Thai basil, we have three cilantros, we have nine spinaches, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I had, this one's trying to, I don't know, it'll probably die. It doesn't look like it got good connection in the ground. This is Joy Choi Chinese cabbage, and this is collards. Over here, same exact thing having trouble with the Thai basil germinating again on this one. I'll have to plant it again. And maybe a couple more spinaches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like I'm missing one spinach here. You can see the baby cilantro leaf. Ah, oh, so exciting. That's it for February's garden tour. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and follow along for March's update.